These series of videos have been developed by Public Health Services. The sessions are designed to provide self-directed learning and cover the basics of infection prevention and control. This session is about the chain of infection. From this session, you will have an understanding of the disease transmission model known as the chain of infection. You will also understand how to reduce the risk of transmitting infection or infectious agents by using standard and transmission based precautions. The chain of infection is a simplified method of showing how infections are transmitted. Infections occur when there is an organism able to cause disease, it has a way of being transmitted and able to enter a susceptible host. If all these factors occur, infection can occur. Firstly, we will look at the role of the organism in the chain of infection. Organisms are too small to be seen with the naked eye. There are different types of organisms, including bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and viruses. There are many different sources of organisms, but the most common source of human infection is other humans. These can be people who have symptoms, or they may be asymptomatic, such as someone who is incubating a disease, a carrier, or is chronically infected. Other sources include animals, the environment such as soil, water, insects and food. You are also a source of organisms and they may cause disease if the organisms get into a part of your body where they are not usually found. For example, E. coli can harmlessly live in your gut, however if it gets into your bladder it can cause a urinary tract infection. Next, we will look at the role of transmission in the chain of infection. In healthcare, organisms are able to spread in many ways. It may be from a patient, on a healthcare worker's unclean hands, via a piece of equipment that has not been cleaned between patients, or from a surface that has not been cleaned adequately. Routes of transmission can be grouped as vertical or horizontal. Vertical transmission of organisms occurs from mother to child, either via the placenta before the baby is born, or perinatally through direct contact with blood or body fluids. The most common method of horizontal transmission is by direct or indirect contact. Transmission can also occur via airborne particles that drift in the air or droplets that can travel up to one metre. Other modes of transmission occur via blood, food, water, sexual or vector-borne, such as a mosquito. The final component of the chain of infection is the host. The host has a number of defences that help provide resistance to infection. Some are specific defences and are provided by the immune response to vaccine, previous infection or maternal antibodies. Other defences are non-specific, such as intact skin, mucous membranes, gastric acids and normal flora. A number of other factors make a host more or less susceptible, which includes age, nutritional status, hygiene and the behaviour of the host that puts them more at risk. To prevent infection, it is necessary to remove one part of the chain of infection, either the organism, intercept transmission, or protect the host. Firstly, removing the organism to prevent infection. The main method to remove organisms from the environment and equipment is by cleaning. This is via routine, structured cleaning with a pH neutral detergent. Another element of removing an organism is in the cleaning and reprocessing of shared patient equipment. 
Shared patient equipment can be implicated in the transmission of pathogens between patients and requires appropriate reprocessing according to its intended use and manufacturer's instructions. There are three categories of items in patient care and each requires a different level of reprocessing according to the risk. The second method to break the chain of infection is preventing transmission. This involves the use of standard and transmission-based proportions. These proportions decrease the risk of transmission of organisms in healthcare from recognised and unrecognised sources. Standard precautions are required for the care of all patients and include a range of techniques. These include hand hygiene, the use of personal protective equipment such as gowns, gloves, masks and eyewear, as well as cleaning, sharps, linen and waste management, and reprocessing reusable equipment. Transmission-based precautions are for patients with known or suspected organisms that are not contained by standard precautions alone. The precautions are used according to the mode of transmission of the pathogen and involve the use of personal protective equipment, consideration to patient placement or isolation, and in some cases, specific air handling requirements to minimise the risk of transmission. The third method to break the chain of infection is protecting the host. Protection of the host may occur via immunity to infection from prior disease or immunisation, or by using personal protective equipment such as gloves to protect non-intact skin. Minimising the use of unnecessary invasive devices in patients prevents a portal of entry and the general health status also has a role in protecting the host from infection. Organisms can be transmitted in various ways. For infection to occur, you need an organism, a mode of transmission, and a susceptible host. Standard and transmission-based proportions are key strategies that remove a component of the chain of infection. This session has been based on the Australian guidelines for the prevention and control of infection in healthcare. Thank you to the Australian Commission on Safety and Quality in Healthcare for permission to use their standardised infection prevention and control signs.